Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten, but to start things off, what are we drinking? Sir Alexander Saxton's Fossil. It's a German ice bock. Mm, and what percent? Oh, nine, ten percent? Ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Today we're continuing our made-for-TV horror theme, and we're going to dedicate a whole episode to John Carpenter's made-for-TV efforts. So the first one is called Someone's Watching Me, and it came out in 1978, written and directed by John Carpenter. It stars Adrian Barbeau who he ended up marrying. They met on the set of this movie. And Lauren Hutton is in this as well. The movie starts off with, uh, we get introduced to Lee, which is Lauren Hutton's character, and she's moving to a big high-rise apartment building for a new job. She befriends Adrienne Barbeau's character. Kind of an interesting thing, she's actually gay in this, Adrienne Barbeau. That's right, yeah. Which is pretty rare. Oh, for you 78, know, for... you don't really have female gay characters on TV. Yeah, Lee starts noticing, like, when she comes home, the doors open ajar. She also starts getting really strange phone calls. She also gets gifts, too, yeah. in the mail. Little by little, she starts getting more and more paranoid that somebody's watching her, right? She goes to the cops to try and get them to help her and get them to do yeah. something. No, they won't do anything. Eventually, her and her friend sort of cook up a scheme to try and catch this guy. Perfect example of taking the format of a TV movie where you can't have a lot of gore. Just have a story, a really good simple story, told and paced perfectly. Exactly. It's all building tension. You feel what she feels. Yeah. You also sympathize with these characters a lot because there's yeah. a lot of character building, right? The scene where she comes home and then you see the shadow of whoever's in the apartment just kind of go by her and leave because she's right. still there when she gets <laughs> home, you know? Yeah, it's like... Ugh. And the scene in the laundromat, the guy's stalking her and she has to go under that grate. Yeah, she, she drops the key. Yeah, and then yeah. the guy comes and stands on the grate and is kind of looking around and she's just... Yeah, yeah. And if you would have looked down, he would have clearly seen her. Yeah. It's a great mystery, too. It's a good mystery movie. Uncle Leo is in this. <laughs> He's kind of a patsy. <laughs> yeah, they all send him away, yeah. and he loses his pension yeah. and everything. <laughs> so it's kind bastard. of nice seeing Uncle Leo in something different, you know? <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's young, but he's still old. Yeah, it's the perfect mix between uh, Rear Window and Black Christmas. And you can tell where Carpenter's going from here, right? Exactly. Like he uses a lot of elements and techniques in this in Halloween. Yeah. He's kind of perfecting that. Body Bags, <laughs> sort of hosted by John Carpenter himself. Yeah. It's an anthology series, and the first one is The Gas Station. A girl starts a new job at a gas station. Make sure you have your key on you, because once the door closes, that's it. You're locked out. You're locked out on the news that somebody's on the loose, right? He's still on the loose! <laughs> and it takes place in Haddonfield. <laughs> that's right, yeah. All these weird people start coming around. Wes Craven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, George Buck Flowers is his name. Uh, he was in tons of John Carpenter things. Tons of things in general. He's always the drunk guy <laughs> or yeah. the bum. Yeah. Crazy drug driver. <laughs> and the suspense builds. Eventually all of this kind of culminates into somebody really chasing her and wanting to kill her. And she's gonna have to fight for her life. A simple story told perfectly by the master where it's all about building tension and suspense and like all the foreshadowing is really neat in this yeah you have to pay attention yeah. right it's again it's a classic carpenter thing where yeah. if you're not paying attention you're going to miss these clues that elevate the story to yeah. the next level right even all the cameos are super neat in this you Ooh. know employee of the month little picture and it's sam <laughs> raimi you know yeah and uh, david naughton is a little cameo in this too he was of course famous for american werewolf in london exactly peter jason is in this too and he's uh, a carpenter regular, basically. Mm -hmm. he's, he's in Prince of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the next story on Body Bags is called Hair, and it is not really a horror. It's more of a comedy. Stacy Keach is in it, and he's great. He plays a great straight man in this. And yeah. He plays a balding man. You can sympathize with this guy. I've been there where he's trying to 
<laughs> style it different so it's kind of hiding it a little bit and he's mm -hmm. super obsessing over yeah. going bald he got that toupee he goes <laughs> he goes to the barber shop wearing a toupee <laughs> <laughs> he tries doing some one of those painted on jobs where you, you just paint your scalp thing. <laughs> when he answers the door yeah, you know? <laughs> Super obvious. The girlfriend goes to kiss him on the top of the head and she's got all that paint shit on her lips. <laughs> yeah. So he keeps seeing infomercials for this new hair restoration. Gets to choose his hairstyle, right? <laughs> that super 90s tech. Wakes up the next day and he's got all this hair. But the hair keeps growing and the hair is alive. You see the little follicles moving yeah. like worms and stuff. This one's great for just the characters. You really sympathize with the characters and you can yeah. you can relate to them. Right? I can relate to them. <laughs> I think a lot of people can even yeah. if they're not bald, yeah. right? This is about vanity. Yeah. The next one is called Eyes and uh, this one wasn't directed by Carpenter, it was directed by Toby Hooper. This one tells the story of Mark Hamill who's a baseball player and he's kind of making it to the big times. He seems kind of old to be making it to the big times. Yeah, <laughs> on a drive home it's raining out and he gets into an accident and a big shard of glass goes into one of his eyes. We do learn that there's a new treatment to replace his eye with a cadaver's eye. Everything's going great except all of a sudden he starts getting flashes and he sees flashes of like somebody buried in the backyard or putting stuff down the garburetor in the sink and he sees an arm going down with blood everywhere and he also starts turning against his wife. He starts getting very irate with her. Yeah. And it turns out that this eye they got from a serial killer. If you want to see what Mark Hamill does exactly, keep watching. Keep watching if you want to see uh, Luke Skywalker's ass. Yeah, th this one is great. I really yeah. like the story. It's, it's, it's really good. Mark Hamill fucking kills it in this. So that's Body Bags. A yeah, really, really, really good made-for-TV horror anthology. Um, and the music for the whole thing is great too. Of it's course. so John Carpenter. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. The next one on our list is part of the Masters of Horror, and we've already covered it, so we're not going to go super into detail, but it is Cigarette Burns. If you want to see our full review, click the link. We're going to post it up here. Uh, but just to quickly go over it, it's basically about a, a film buff who is hired to find a, a lost film by a very eccentric man, and it, he gets involved in this weird seedy underworld <laughs> trying to find this lost film. It's fucking killer, so... Check out Cigarette Burns and check out our review for it. The other uh, Masters of Horror one that Carpenter directed is Pro-Life. And not so good. Yeah. Not as good as the, the, the first one he did. Um, but this one tells the story of a girl, a young girl, who finds her, her way to an abortion clinic. She wants an abortion. Bad. Yeah. She's like she's telling these guys, I want it out of me. Her dad pulls up, played by Ron Perlman. Everybody seems afraid of him. He's got this big reputation and he's basically going to do everything he can to stop it. Breaking into the place and trying to shut the whole thing down. The reason why she wants to get rid of this baby is because it's not really a human baby. It's growing very quick. Uh, very fast, yeah. And that's where we're going to end it because you're just going to have to keep watching and see what this thing really is and yeah. how it turns out. I think it seems a bit phoned in yeah. on Carpenter's end. He just took it for the job, yeah. for the paycheck. Uh, the story is really neat. The conflict of abortion, right? Like, there's this guy who's super against abortion. He's going to these extremes to stop it. Yeah. But in this case, maybe he should change his mind. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, and he's using God as the excuse, yeah. right? But the funny thing is, is that God, you don't have to worry about God in this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is really good. It's just, I think that the, the way it's told is kind of really kind of just lazy. It falls flat. Yeah. And it feels flat. And the effects are pretty good in it, actually, but they don't need to be there. That's kind of my problem with it. Like, mm -hmm. the, you don't need to see all that stuff. You could have got the job done without any of those things happening. So, yeah, d definitely check it out. It's worth watching. It's just not going to change your life. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, you compare this to cigarette burns, and they're, like, drastically different. You can tell John Carpenter cared about cigarette burns, and not so much about pro-life, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's our little uh, episode on John Carpenter made-for-TV horror that some of them I didn't even really know existed until not too long ago. Right. So you may not know they exist either, so definitely check them out. And until next time...
keep drinking. <laughs>